Good morning everyone, my name's Liam Chilton, I'm the music coordinator here at St John's Blackheath and a big welcome to you, especially if you're feeling new around here, you're very welcome. Today you've joined us for an all-age service. Now an all-age service isn't just for kids, we're trying to make everything we do as accessible as possible for people of all ages, from the youngest all the way up to the oldest. And what are we going to do today? Well today we're going to hear from God, we're going to hear a true story about Jesus Christ. We're going to talk to God, we're going to pray to him as our Father. And we're going to think about how we as Christians can live our lives for Jesus. But before all that, we're going to sing. Now, if you're used to singing at church, you might have been finding singing at home really quite difficult. Well, let me encourage you. Let me read some words from Psalm 103. The psalmist says this. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. God has given us so much in Jesus. Let's praise him as we sing together. Please join in at home. Thank you. 
Amen. Yes, we do indeed worship God's holy name. But if we're honest with ourselves, we don't always worship God's holy name as we should. We don't always love God as we should. We don't always love the people around us as we should. So we're going to confess together now. We can confess to God those things that we've done wrong. The confession will come up on the screen. Perhaps read it through and reflect on the ways that you've sinned this week. Let's say these words together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 103 goes on to say this. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. We can be confident of God's forgiveness because of Jesus Christ dying on the cross in our place. Now the next thing we're going to do is declare together what we believe as Christians. We're going to read together the Apostles' Creed. Now Christians all over the world and throughout the centuries have been declaring these truths and we're going to join in that line of believers as we say these words. Now that's what we mean when we say the words Holy Catholic Church. We mean the Universal Church. So let's say these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now, in case you didn't know, today is National Sports Sunday. I'm going to hand over to Matt Baker, one of our mission partners, to tell us more. Hi there, my name is Matt Baker. I'm the National Director for Sports Chaplaincy UK for English Sport. What strange days that we're living in at the moment where there's going to be no professional sport still, we're told, until at the earliest the 1st of June. Premier League hoping to return possibly sometime middle of June. We might see professional cricket sometime in July, similar Premiership rugby. Might be racing, motor racing from Silverstone towards the end of July. And then there's some hopes that horse racing could recommence sometime after the 1st of June. That's just professional sport. If you go down to amateur and grassroots, who knows when we might see team sports being played again at that sort of level. And we are told that it's just starting now. There's golf and, and tennis, albeit in a very kind of different fashion recreationally to we have known before. So here we are, National Sports Sunday 2020 as a church. How can we be praying then for the people of sport? Well, one thing is clear. God still loves sport and he particularly loves the men, women and children who play sport and who are involved in one way or another. So here's three suggestions. Firstly, please do pray for all those that are going to be economically affected by the fact that sports clubs, sports associations can't play. Some of those will possibly go to the wall. There'll be jobs lost. 
So please pray for all those that are affected by that and those on the periphery of it as well. The, the burger vans, the stewards, the pubs, the shops around the grounds. So pray for all of those. Secondly, please pray for the mental and emotional well-being of all those in sport. We know that physical, physical exercise is good for us. But for those who are created to play sport, please pray for them at the moment as they might be struggling with mental and emotional well-being. And right the way through, for our boys and girls who can't get out there and play the sports they love. And then thirdly, think about your local sports club, your local sports association. How can you help them, particularly as they might start to get themselves back on their feet again in the months that are to follow? Thanks very much, Matt. Now we're going to sing together again. We're going to sing together our all-age song that we've been learning over the last few weeks. It's called Brick After Brick. And in fact, some of the kids from the church family are going to lead us in doing the actions. So please do join in at home. After we've sang, we're going to pray to God and then hear from him in his word. Let's sing. God used to dwell in a house among his people But now he has a home that's better than the first It doesn't look like a building with a steeple He's living in the people of the church Brick after brick, God is building His temple Brick after brick, He is making it strong With Christ the sure foundation and His people as the stones He is building a place He can live Brick after brick Christ is the rock on which everything's depending He's making sure His house is steady as can be His love is strong and His promise is unending And He'll protect His church from all their enemies Brick after brick, God is building His temple the sure foundation and his people as the stones he is building a place he can live break after break all his people gather round singing out the joyful sound giving glory to their maker and they build each other up as they share the bread and cup to remember their Savior. Brick after brick, brick after brick after brick, brick after brick, brick after brick after brick after brick. God is building His temple. And his people as the stones He is building a place he can live Brick after brick Brick after brick after brick after brick Do we feel like Jesus' friends in a boat? Rowing, but it's really hard. But Jesus is not as far away as we thought. When school at home is hard, when work from home is hard, when not having work is hard, remind us that you are there, Jesus. Do we feel scared in the middle of the night? But what does Jesus say to us all? Be brave, 
I am here. When we worry about the virus, when we are sad about bad news, when we don't feel safe, give us courage, Jesus. When they got to the shore, loads of people who needed help came to Jesus. Who do we know who needs Jesus' help right now? People who have the virus or other illnesses, people who work in the NHS, care homes, supermarkets, people who are now worried about money. Please help many, many people, Jesus. And now let's say the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, St. John's. It's Sophie here. Today's Bible reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 45 to 56. Because today's an all age, I've actually also gone and had some pictures printed out, which will help tell the story for the children. Verse 45. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back in the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida while he sent the people home. After telling everybody goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Late that night, the disciples were in the boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on land. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. He intended to go past them, but when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking he was a ghost. They were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, for I am here. Then he climbed into the boat and the wind stopped. They were totally amazed, for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Genesaret. They brought the boat to shore and climbed out. The people recognized Jesus at once. They ran throughout the whole area, carrying sick people on mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, in villages, cities, or the countryside, they brought the sick out to the marketplaces. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. This is the word of our Lord. Well, good morning, St. John's. My name is Sophie, and if I haven't met you yet, I'm the children's worker. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you some thoughts around that passage that we just read about Jesus walking on the water. When I first read it, what I was particularly struck by was verse 48, surprisingly or not. It's when Jesus sees the disciples straining at the oars because the winds were against them. That seems to indicate to me that there was a storm brewing or perhaps there was a storm on this lake that Jesus was walking across. I started thinking about how that was probably more difficult for him to walk across it and that it maybe wasn't a very pleasant evening for the disciples when they saw Jesus approaching them. This got me thinking about storms in general. At the moment, I think it'd be fair to say We've been thrown into a bit of a stormy season. I don't think I really need to go into too many details about what that stormy season might be. We're all fairly familiar with it. And what's interesting is that the world's been put into this stormy season together. We've all been exposed to this awful virus, this awful pandemic. 
And while we're all in the same storm together, we're not all necessarily in the same boat. For some people at the moment, perhaps your boat is actually really quite sturdy, strong and well equipped. Perhaps you're an introvert. Perhaps you haven't lost your job and working from home is actually really simple for you. Maybe this season's actually not been too uncomfortable. For others, maybe you had a really great sturdy boat and this storm, this pandemic has caused a leak to appear and maybe you're taking on a bit of water. You're trying to plug up that leak as best you can and at the moment, you're in survival mode. For other people, maybe your boat wasn't finished. You didn't really have anything to float on and at the moment, you are grabbing whatever you can just to stay afloat. This whole season has such a variety of experiences, which is why I think this passage is really, really poignant for us today. So in the face of such a storm, where is Jesus? Our Bible story today clearly demonstrates where he is. He's above it. Jesus walking on the water was an impossible feat. It was a miracle and it was amazing. It was such an excellent way for God the Father to confirm to the disciples once again that Jesus was the Messiah. He was the son of the one true God. This comes with it a whole other set of expectations. But one of the biggest is that Jesus holds authority over everything. If this were a Marvel movie and Jesus were a Marvel character, I like to think that he would have been given some like cool name like the Stormwalker. Something that demonstrated that he was capable of conquering all of the natural world. This is essentially what this story demonstrates for us really clearly. That nature obeys God the Father and Jesus his Son. What a fantastic comfort to us, his followers and his children. I've been telling the kids at St John's for a number of weeks now that God is in charge of everything. And this story is just another example that shows us that water, the laws of physics, the laws of the natural world do not apply to God because he wrote them. Jesus walking on water, showing his disciples that in the natural sense there was nothing he could not do, goes on to further demonstrate how there is nothing he cannot do in the spiritual sense. His conquering of nature goes on to further foreshadow his ultimate victory on the cross, his victory over sin and death. There's a children's song which says, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And for me, this story perfectly demonstrates that thought. Jesus can walk on water. There is nothing he cannot do. So what do we do if we find ourselves in the sea with the winds coming against us with a storm brewing? There are three things from this story that I've taken and been encouraged by that I'd like to share. The first one's quite simple. This account of Jesus walking on water is actually given in three of the four Gospels, in Matthew, Luke, and in Mark. In each of them, each time when Jesus calls out to the disciples for the first time, he says the same words. Take courage, don't be afraid, I am here. And that's the first point. Take courage, he is here. Jesus has not forsaken you nor forgotten you. He's not left you behind in a storm out at sea where you can't cope. He is with you. Take courage. He is here. The second thing I think it's crucial to remember is that Jesus is above the waves. It's revealed that Jesus is walking on water in such a simple sentence. Jesus was walking out on the water. He wasn't struggling. He wasn't leaping. He wasn't sort of having heavy feet. He was simply walking. And as we've already said, the wind suggests that the sea was not calm and that there might have been a storm brewing or a storm happening. 
I'm sure everyone can remember the winds we had in uh, February. They were strong and I wouldn't have wanted to be out at sea during winds like that. Again, we need to remember that whatever you are facing, Jesus has won the ultimate victory over sin and death. He has forgiven everybody. He has redeemed everybody and everything. And though we don't live in a perfect world yet, we will have it one day when he returns. So take courage. Jesus is above the waves. The third point, which I think is really important to remember during this season, is to keep your eyes on Jesus. In another account of this story in Matthew chapter 14, Peter actually gets out of the boat. And all is going fine for Peter until he looks down at the waves. As soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, he started to sink. The logic and overwhelm of the situation got to him. Another interesting point on this is that the disciples saw Jesus and they cried out. And this got Jesus' attention. This is when he says, take courage, don't be afraid, I am here. But at the end of verse 48, it clearly indicates that Jesus was going to walk past the disciples. This is such an important image and picture for us as modern day Christians. It clearly shows us that when we look at Jesus, he looks back at us. When the disciples cried out and looked to Jesus on the waves, not only did Jesus say, take courage, don't be afraid, I am here. Jesus walked towards them and he got in the boat. And do we all know what happened when Jesus got in the boat? The winds calmed down, the storm eased. When we look at Jesus, he looks back at us. And that has got to be one of the most exciting things ever. Take courage, turn your eyes towards Jesus. Storms, trials are always going to happen throughout our life. It's not unusual for the people of God to experience these sort of things throughout the Bible. You only have to think of Moses, David, Joseph, Jesus. It happened to them all. We can be reassured, however, that Jesus, again, he has that ultimate victory over sin and death. To sit with his presence is one of the best comforts. There's a couple ways you can do this. You could read your Bible and meditate over particular scriptures, like the Psalms, which deal with uh, plenty of emotions around this. For me, I'm a massive journaler. So I like to write out my feelings and, and write out a letter to God about what's going on and how I'm feeling to help me process it. You can uh, worship with music. You can worship with visual arts and painting. It can be so therapeutic. There are so many ways to sit with his presence. But I encourage you to seek him, seek him in the middle of this storm because he is there. For me, this storm of COVID has been anything less than pleasant. I've actually struggled quite a lot with panic attacks um, and with losing a lot of sleep because I've been so stressed and anxious. What I've actually found is particularly that turning my eyes to Jesus and keeping focused on his perspective of the situation has just been amazingly helpful and important. Spending as much time in his presence as I can to keep that focus has not actually been that simple. It's been quite hard because it's sort of like a um, conditioning of your mind. And I'm not saying that relief is going to come in the instant that you think Jesus has gotten into your boat. It comes when it comes and sometimes that's really hard. But I can say with a lot of peace that I have actually experienced a breakthrough in the last two weeks and I've been feeling much, much calmer and I've been able to sleep. There's an old hymn that has a beautiful couple of lines and it says, turn your eyes towards Jesus, look full in his glorious face 
and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. This perfectly captures what I've been trying to say. Jesus is above every storm you're going to face. He's on top of it, he's in control, and he's calm. When we look at him and focus on his glory, everything else fades away. Take courage, he is here. Take courage, he is above the storm. Take courage and turn your eyes towards Jesus. It's also crucial to remember that this story is a metaphor for the significance that Jesus is going to hold over the spiritual world. Jesus is in control and he's winning the ultimate battle over sin and death. His glory and goodness triumphs over Satan, over sin. Everything else is just details and small details at that. my wrestling and in my doubt in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, oh you are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Tomorrow brings with each morning I'll rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining.
Praise God for his word to us. The Lord Jesus is indeed above the storm. And if we trust in him, he will bring us safely home to be with him for all of eternity. So take courage and trust Jesus. Now we've got some important notices before we end our time together. Um, don't forget that the food bank donations can be dropped off to the new address, um, 49 Bankery Road. And if you need vouchers uh, for the food bank or know someone who does, um, then just email us at pastoralhub at stjohnsblackheath.org.uk. In fact, you can email us at that email address if you want someone to talk to or if you want someone to pray with, then just send us an email. I'm going to hand over to Matt, who's got one final notice for us. Good morning. It's so good to have you with us this morning. I was really struck this week by a statistic um, that the Guardian newspaper released, that one in four people in this country are now attending church online. How awesome is that? And we've loved hearing your stories that you shared with us of friends and family who are now coming along to church online who previously haven't even considered it. It's great to hear what God is doing in this time. And if you are one of those people who is here for the first time, it is great to have you with us and you are more than welcome. And we would love to get to know you. And in a second, I'll tell you a little bit how you can do that. At St John's, we've got loads of things going on. All of them you can find out about on our church website and via our social media. And again, if you're one of those people who is new on our website, there is a section specifically there for you to... Uh, Register so we can get in contact with you, so we can uh, make that contact. We'd love to get to know you. Um, we as a church have been praying for three people who we want to come to know Jesus over the last four or five years. And one of my friends has this phrase uh, that if you want to pray for something, then you need to be prepared to be part of God's solution in that. And what better time than now to be sharing with our friends and family uh, what God has done in our lives, sharing this truth of Jesus. We can do that really simply now by sharing our online services and um, by talking to people who we maybe haven't spoken to for a while and offering at the end of that conversation just to pray for them. There are so many ways that we can be talking Jesus to people. And I want to encourage you this week and challenge you to do that. We want to be sharing the truth of who Jesus is, the hope that is found in him, that is unbreakable, everlasting, and all satisfying. How good is that truth? Let's share that this week. Thanks very much, Matt. Now, as we come to an end of our service, hear the final words from Psalm 103. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. May the Lord be with us all as we seek to be his servants who do his will this week. Have a great week. See you next week. <laughs>